Hi Game Leapers, it's The Come. Hope you guys are doing well today. In today's video, we're going to be detailing the 13.4 patch notes and what these are actually going to mean for the Rift. And what we'll do in tomorrow's video as well, we will base our tier list on these changes. So to make sure you guys know who the most broken, who the worst champions are going to be on the Rift in 13.4, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our future season 13 uploads. But just before we do get into the video, one thing you guys have to do before you get into your next game is to download the Paul Professor app linked in the description because it allows you to quickly import the best room page used from the best players in the world on the champion you're picking. You don't have to make the room page, just one click of a button and bang, you're ready to go. But that's not all because the app also allows you to scout your opponent and the app will give you their stats how well they play their champion so you can know more about your opponent than they know about themselves and the app also gives you an in-game overlay so you can compare your cs and your kill participation to your rank or even challenger players like faker and there's a reason why 3 million people have downloaded this free application guys it's because it works so get around it in season 12 those links are in the description so the 13.4 patch notes now challenger aria is on sale so ride a buffing aria not only are they buffing her base armor, but they're also buffing her base HP. This actually makes her early game a lot better, and they're also decreasing her Spirit Rush's cooldown by 10 seconds at each rank. This means you can just use your ultimate more, get around the map, make more plays, and also survive those sticky situations. Now, someone on the balance team really wants to move their way to Challenger because Alistair is copying more buffs. That was already bad, I'm sorry. But yeah, your passive is getting buffed, so the actual heal you give your ally champion, and you're also getting more AP in your W and your Q. See, I don't know like who wants to play Rocket Belt. I don't even know like Luden's Tempest Alistair, but someone is really trying hard for this. But this will also help you guys if you're going Shirelli as Alistair because there is actual ability power in that mythic item. So there are like some builds, I guess, that will benefit from this. But unless you're actually going like full AP Alistair, these changes aren't really going to mean anything. Now the mummy might be a little sadder in 13.4 because Amumu is getting nerfed. This guy in 13.3 was incredibly strong. So what's happening is that your health growth is going down and your armor growth as well. Also, your W's damage is actually getting nerfed too so based on the actual targets maximum hp you will be dealing less damage this won't see like a massive drop in Amumu's win rate, but the change we'll talk about later to his actual favorite item, this will definitely impact him. Now, probably the most standard nurse here are happening to the Cryo Phoenix because Anivia with the new Rod of Ages is way too healthy in the mid game. So what they're doing is they're chopping down her HP scaling and also hitting her armor scaling. So a few more deaths to Froggen and Co might be on the cards. Now, for those of you with no self-respect, you will be disappointed to know that Annie has copped some nerfs. So your base health has decreased, the E damage has also decreased, and the ultimate cooldown has increased. Now, I don't think these are the biggest nerfs in the world. For sure, her win rate is going to go down maybe like 1 or 2%, but it's really hitting like Support Annie more than anything else because Support Annie actually has like the highest win rate on the Rift at the moment with over like a 55% win rate. And what you do is actually max your E first, your Molden Shield. Because Ryder trying to encourage you here to max this last or maybe even second at the earliest, this definitely hits you. But for any version of Annie, these are definitely nerfs and her win rate will drop. Now, one of the worst solo queue champions will be still one of the worst solo queue champions in 13.4 because this buff to Aphelios, yes, you might want to like put points in your attack speed, but it's really not going to change that much. Like the champion just has such a hard time in solo queue, especially when you don't really have like any sort of escape until you get Gale Force. That's even if you do go this mythic item. He also just gets like kind of outperformed and out damaged at that second major item spike, but every other ready you carry. So yeah, if you do actually care about your league points, probably don't play Aphelios for the next two weeks until you get some actual buffs. Now, the Emperor of Shirima is not going to feel like an Emperor in 13.4, it's just like a Felios. Izir is going to be feeling like a peasant, a pigeon peasant, because of the nerfs. So Ryder obviously like sick of just seeing this guy in pro play, so they've adjusted your mana. So your base mana is going down by 100. Now the mana growth is going up, but you're not really going to feel this until the mid to late game. So your early game is hit big time by this. Also your W's recharge time is going up at earlier ranks. This means that you just have way less pressure during the early laning phase, and you're really picking his ear for early priority. For sure, there are champions you might struggle against, like let's say Zoe, maybe Syndra or the old Syndra. Oriana might be a bit of a hard matchup because you get outranged, but that's why you're picking his ear. Now his identity is actually really going to change because your power in the early game is going out the window. Even if they're buffing the base damage of your E and the AP ratio, who cares about this? You're very rarely going to be using this and actually needing magic damage from this, jumping onto like an enemy champion, and your ultimate damage, even though this is going up at each rank and it's also scaling off more AP for sure I think this will be like good for the generic Azir player so in like lower elos but for those Azir players who are actually very good most of your damage is going to come from your soldiers and queuing these compensation buffs if you want to call them that I don't really think they do anything for the Emperor Shrim and let me know in the comment section guys your thoughts actually on what's happening in 13.4 now looking at this champion's head 
you would expect him to be scary to play against, right? But who doesn't think they have a free win when they see Cho'Gath on the enemy team? Legit. Like you see this guy in champ select, you just automatically know if you have your screen turned on, you're not going to get hit by any Q. And most Cho'Gath players as well are probably auto-filled because they're like, oh, I just want to pick like a weak side, you know, tanky top laner and not feet. But these buffs might actually help our perception of the Gaff, you know, kind of like resonate with his illustration, with his picture. So the fact your armor growth is going up, making you tanky in the mid to late game. Also, your Q's mana cost is down by 10 and the magic damage, the base damage is up from rank 2 onwards, even though the AP ratio is staying the same. Also, your W's mana cost is down at later ranks as well. These are really nice buffs for Cho'Gath, but like I said, are you still going to be able to land your Q? It's not like the radius is increasing? Probably not, right? And against a lot of top laners at the moment, Cho'Gath is just going to struggle to actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe against, but maybe these buffs will shift him in the right direction. Now, the queen of the arachnids is getting stepped on this patch by the balance team, and honestly, good. Because guys, if you've played against Elise, the champion, because you just like take zero tower damage, I also liked it how they buff tower damage, but it doesn't mean anything, right? Because you take none anyway. Like they can buff it to a million. It doesn't matter for Elise. So that was just kind of redundant. But anyway, your Q base damage decreasing and your spiderling base damage decreasing. These are big nerfs. Elise is definitely going to feel this more than a lot of other champions in this patch as far as nerf champions go. So you might have to look at another champion if you want to dominate the early game from the jungle role. Now, one champion who you might still be able to do this on is J4 and last patch, was for my father the king this patch is just about making him a bit less broken so your w's cooldown is increasing to nine seconds that's a second extra and the shield strength is now scaling less off your bonus attack damage now the grandmaster at arms the hockey stick Jax is meant to be a late game champion but he beats everyone in lane right now how is that fair and honestly like still will legit like i don't know how much these nerfs or whatever they want to call them changes are going to do because you're still getting like the empowered auto attack every two auto attacks yes the damage on this might be down and even if they're like changing your e and the ap ratio on this and even if your base health is going down like seriously like Jax is still going to be very close to his current power level so keep picking him guys keep blind picking him because he's just that broken now for all you archaeologists out there you might want to inspect a bit of malphite at 13.4 because his w getting buffed these pretty much mean the Malphite, especially when you pick him guys into attack damage champions, especially ones who rely on attack speed. So one might be Jax, for example, because not only do you have your E, but you also have Frozen Heart as an item buy. So yeah, Malphite would just be more viable into those good lanes for him. Now we all know that the Chodia version of Treebeard was disgustingly OP last patch. Well in this one, Jungle Maokai is copying it once again, and rightly so. But because Riot have a random Maokai fetish at the moment, his Q is getting compensation buffed, so it will deal more damage to targets with a lot of HP. In other words, top lane Maokai might be the best thing for the Twisted Treant. So for sure, jungle Maokai worse, but top lane Maokai might actually be really good. Now, at the moment, Summoner's Rift is not exactly clockwork for Orianna. The mid laners are struggling, that's even after the recent buffs. So in 13.4, your base armor is increasing, which is huge. This isn't just good against attack damage mid laners, but also mages who will auto attack you exactly the same right as the Ari buff. Now, the mana cost in your W is also going down by 10, which really helps out the laning phase because you can actually use your dissonance more than a couple of times without being oom. Now we can't go a patch or two without Miss Skins herself getting buffed, so Riven's passive is now going to scale linearly, which means you're getting extra damage at each level rather than at stages in a game. And it will also deal damage to towers, although at 50% effectiveness. This means when you queue an animation cancel to auto attack towers, well, it's not just for show anymore because those auto attacks will actually deal extra damage now. Less pentakills are on the cards for Samira in 13.4 because you are getting less life steal from your ultimate and you are losing out on movement speed from your passive until level 16. Now a very rare side is seeing Senna as an AD carry, but in 13.4 for the next two weeks, this might change because your attack ratio is going up by 33%. This means that for builds that include Kraken Slayer and Ginsu's and whatever attack speed item you're building, you will be ramping up the DPS because of this. Now your ultimate will also be dealing more damage in the mid to late game, which is a big buff as well, and its cooldown is going down 20 seconds at each rank. So watch out for those miss rays for the next two weeks. Now, a bit like Alistair, someone on the balance team like must love playing Thresh 2 because for another patch, the Warden of Chains is getting some love and basically these changes are encouraging you to max your Q first, followed by your E and then your W last. This still won't change the fact that the Thresh on your team will miss every death sentence, but hey, buffs are buffs. Now, whether you are playing this right clicker in the jungle or top lane, you are definitely going to win less than 13.4 because AD and AP Udyr are both getting nerfed. What a shame. Now, when someone might say a pleasant buff or like something that's nice, right? You know, we kind of use those adjectives because it's not really going to change all that much. And that is pretty much what's happening to Vega. The two buffs to Vega this patch, yeah, they're pretty much exactly that. The range on your Q is increasing. The range on your W is increasing. This makes the laning phase more tolerable, allowing you to get to that fabled mid 
to lay game without being giga behind. So yeah, just a couple of nice buffs. Finally, the Rune King. For those of you building Crit Viego, it's time to keep doing it because your auto attacks after you cure target can now crit. Does this mean Kraken Slayer or Immortal Shield Bow Viega is the way to go? We'll have to see. Also, your ultimate is dealing more damage based on the amount of bonus attack damage you have, thus helping your mid to late game. Now, as far as items go, guys, and if you are enjoying this video, please remember to leave a like down below. And yeah, for Amumu, Maokai, Ude, all of these ELO inflators are getting further nerfed because Demonic Embrace's burn damage is now capped against monsters. So as tank junglers, you can't one-shot camps anymore. Unlucky. Now, Doran Shield, to those of you starting with this item and to that Diamond AD carry playing Tristana I had, the healing every 5 seconds is now 33% less than what it was. This is actually a sizable nerf and will really affect those champions early game laning phases, particularly in the top lane because the top lane can be quite devastating if you fall behind and because of this there is just more chance of that happening. Now, just when you thought Thresh, Alistair, and the other engaged supports couldn't get buffed enough, their items are also getting buffed, while the Enchanter support items are getting nerfed. They really want to change this bot lane meta. So those were the big champion and item changes, guys, for 13.4. Actually, in the flesh, we'll have to wait and see exactly what they mean in the next couple of days for the meta and the champions affected. But thank you so much for watching the video. Until tomorrow's tier list, make sure you hit that subscribe button once again. This has been Eggs. Until then.